What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And in the last video, we guys showed you the quick little build that we did on the CRF 110 pit bike, which is actually the VIP giveaway for this month. We showed you how we cut and buffed and polished this Civic to perfection, where you can literally see yourself in the reflection of this thing. And that actually is the crazy thing is that could actually, oh my goodness, I'm zoomed in. Crazy thing is that could actually be you because uh, you could win this car with every dollar spent on motionautv.com. So we have one issue with the car that we have not addressed yet, is that it it's kind of slow. Uh, it's a 1.8 liter, it's a B18C from Japan, uh, bought from H Motors here in the United States. It is in a super low mileage EK hatch, and this chassis is really light. Like when you drive it, it feels just lightweight, feels like a go-kart, the steering is really light, probably because it has power steering. It actually gets a little bit cold in there too because it also has air conditioning as well. But uh, the thing that it's kind of missing is, you know, right here below some of these AC lines, it's actually missing a turbo. So before we get to installing a turbo system on this thing, first off, we have to buy the turbo system. Then we have to wait for it to show up. Unless you guys want me to throw on this beautiful T3, T4 eBay turbo that was sitting outside in the dirt for a couple weeks. And then this nice cast, beautiful manifold. So. If, uh, if you don't want us to install that, you're gonna have to wait a minute, but I just wanna take you guys for a quick little drive in this thing, naturally aspirated, and then we're gonna go ahead and get on motionalperformance.com. We're gonna order some parts, and then we're gonna tear this thing completely apart and turbo it, and hopefully make a little over 400 horsepower. So uh, if you guys are stoked about that, stay tuned. All right, take this. 71,000 mile unit for a rip. Everything in here just feels so smooth and nice and new and just Garrett's getting in it, you're gonna get it all dirty. I don't know. This guy. Farmer G. This guy, all right. Listen to that Honda. It'll. You know how much better this thing's gonna sound with a turbo on it? It's gonna sound really good. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll do, we're gonna let her warm up for a second. We need to do now since that thing is so slow so we got to order some parts what we're going to do is we're going to get on motionalperformance.com and we're going to order some stuff so i'm just going to go right up here to the top we're going to hit search we're going to type in g30 just g30 hit search what that's going to do is it's going to pull up what we need so what we're looking for here is a g30 660 super core standard rotation so we're going to click that we're just going to add that unit to the cart right there look at that and we even have the affirm so if you want to buy now pay later you could order some things the next thing that we need is the v-band exhaust housing so as we're scrolling here with g30 we want the 1.01 we'll go ahead we'll select that unit add that to the cart so now we have our turbo system right there so the next thing that we need to do is we need to order an artec manifold obviously we don't sell the art we are going to be a dealer. We're kind of set up as a dealer right now, but we're working on some stuff to get the stock through their website and actually add it onto our website. So uh, that will be in the future, but essentially order an RTEC turbo manifold from them. Now we need some injectors. So we'll type in DW1000CC search. So, and then I think I'm gonna put Civic. 
I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put Civic PW 1000 CC This is my first time I've ever done this, so I'm kidding. Uh, so now we have a set of four Deechworks 1000cc injectors. We're going to go ahead and add those to our cart. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we have a year make and model search. So we're going to go right here because we have a 96 Honda Civic. Just go ahead and select everything from the drop down menu. And we're going to hit search right there. So now what that's going to do is sort. We have, a, you can see we got clutches, we got intakes, we got all kinds of things like that. You can see there we have an AEM fuel rail. We're not looking for AEM parts right now. We're looking for some Detroit stuff. So we're going to go ahead and hit Deechworks. And then as you search for Deechworks, it will show you the settings and the things that fit your car. So as you can see right here at the top, we have that 320 uh, LPH fuel pump. We're going to go ahead and add that unit to the car. So now we got a set of injectors. So add that to the car. Now, what is the next thing that we need a turbo smart wastegate? Obviously, since 96 Honda Civic didn't come factory with a turbo, you're not going to be able to get that in the search results. So we're just going to search WG45. And that should pop us up with uh, everything, the turbo smart, the waste gates. So we're going to go ahead and select this Gen 5 Hypergate with a 7 PSI spring. Obviously, stock engine, we want to keep this thing alive. We're going to run low boost. So this thing will come factory with a 7 pound spring in it. So now that we have all the parts, we're going to put this thing up on the lift to start tearing it apart. All right, so looking underneath here, we have a Magnaflow muffler, a white line sway bar kit, skunk two arms, D2 coilovers, rear disc brake kit. We have poly suspension bushings. We have a toe arm adjustment, an adjustable toe arm. Brand new OEM Honda e-brake cable. Stainless exhaust with modifications. It looks like they added another, well, no. Muffler, resonator, another resonator, a flex pipe, the factory, no, that's kind of a factory style, but not really because normally they have a donut, but that's not there. We have a four to two to one header. We have skunk two lower control arms, the spoon big brake kit. It looks like newer axles, D2 coilovers, skunk two uh, camber kit in the top. And then we have Civic SI front knuckles, which is what you have to have to do this big brake kit. So. Look at this. This is like, this is, I don't know if this is better than a child or or not, but this is like, this is, the, the Artec manifold, the things that Artec is doing is absolutely insane. An OEM style, tubular style cast manifold that's out of stainless. It's just absolutely insane. The fit, the finish, it's literally like if Honda Performance Racing back in 1998 wanted to put a Garrett G30 660 on their B series Honda and this is the manifold that they would have done. It's just crazy. So uh, again, this is supposed to work with AC power steering. It's not confirmed yet. We might have to move some lines and stuff, but overall we should still be able to keep that. I think the AC power steering is mostly to clear the AC compressor more so and then you kind of move the line. Garrett G30 660, the V-band 1.01 AR exhaust housing just because we want to keep a lot of the torque out of the, the, the engine. You know, this is a stock engine, stock bottom end, should be able to make a little bit over 400 horsepower pretty reliably. But if we have a bunch of torque come in low RPM, that's when it's going to spit rods. Whereas if we have a bigger exhaust housing, that's going to kind of make the turbo a little bit lazier than probably we would want it if it had like pistons and rods and stuff in it. And then to top it all off, we have a turbo smart 45 millimeter wastegate. The nice thing about the setup too is like, it's safe for this motor. And if you wanted to build a forge motor, you could up the compression and still run that turbine housing or build the motor and run a smaller turbine housing 
and everything else remains the same. Yeah. So it's really nice well, and, and honestly, uh, modular. Like, if you built the motor and up to the compression, you would probably want the bigger yeah, exhaust housing exactly. anyhow. And since Hondas flow so much air, they're just a super efficient air pump. You want a big housing on them anyhow, just because how well they flow. So this thing's gonna be freaking awesome. I just can't wait to see it all mocked up. We're gonna be playing with some AC here in the near future, trying to make that happen. That's the only thing that's up in the air, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this literally it bolts on with the OEM hardware. Look at that. Look at those little indentions and just, it's just like a piece of jewelry, like the inside, like everything's just so smooth and nice. It's beautiful. Come on, start tearing it apart so we could put it together. All right, so we're kind of at the planning stage right now with the turbo setup, manifold, everything kind of dropped in there with uh, very little hassle. It's fitting, but we're gonna have to work around the AC, uh, probably do a reroute, basically a tuck uh, to get it uh, back to the to the firewall over there because got a little bit of interference issues, which we'll probably show you here in a second. But now we're kind of just planning out the exhaust routing, where the oil drain's gonna route, because those two are gonna kind of uh, have to be sorted out and then Charge pipes and the charge pipes gonna be easy, easy part. So we're looking forward to that part of the AC Compatibility is mostly for the placement to get the turbo out of the way to where you can run a downpipe Because of the AC compressor not necessarily there, there absolutely there's no way that you'd be able to run a turbo with that factory thick radiator shroud so no matter what we're gonna have to do a pusher fan in the front of some sort and then potentially reroute the lines, move them around. Garrett has messed around with uh, kind of hardlining some AC stuff before, so we'll uh, we'll mess with that stuff. So, but for for now, technically, we could move the AC stuff out of the way, make a downpipe, make the other stuff, and then put the AC lines and stuff in at a later date. Charge the system, do all that stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this thing. It just it looks cool having that nice of a turbo setup like on a civic because normally you know like everybody is like top mount ebay gt35 cut a hole in the hood and freaking send it whereas now it's like this thing's gonna have full exhaust and wastegate potentially recirculated ac power steering all the stuff it's gonna be a nice car and started doing a little bit more research on the internet about like AC lines and like a tuck kit and stuff like that. There's a really nice kit. It's $330. It gets rid of this condenser, gets rid of these lines. It basically converts the fittings to like a standard, kind of like a hot rod classic style. Sure. And then what we will do is it comes with a new condenser. That new condenser goes right here in the front that will go in between our intercooler and the radiator. And then all of the lines run up over here behind the fender, basically above oh, the yeah. tire, and they will go underneath the battery. So all of these lines right here. So this thing that is kind of right in the middle of everything, you can see it comes down, it goes right in front of our, you know, our compressor housing. It's right on top of everything. Everything is just kind of in the way right here. And again, like I said, AC compressor is kind of the AC capable thing, not necessarily saying that you know, you're gonna be able to run the fan and everything. So I think that that's just the move. Um, I ordered the fast shipping, so maybe it'll be here <laughs> by by uh, by then. But essentially now what we do is just pull out all of the AC lines, which is really gonna free up a lot of room. And then all we really need to do is work around the AC. I mean, really all there is is a line that comes straight out of that, comes forward and then goes into the condenser right yeah. there. It makes it a lot simpler. Tucks the condenser a little bit further forward. Again, more clearance on the turbo and manifold and everything. So I think it's definitely the move. It looked all right, so at this point we have the turbo manifold, turbo wastegate, all of that stuff mounted into the car and it's time to turn to the downpipe. Now, one of the goals of this manifold and the development we're kind of trying to help out with here is to confirm that this setup can work with the factory AC system. 
to clear the compressor for the AC. So one of the first things that we uh, thought to do was to pick up a three inch donut. And if you're familiar with those, it's a very tight radius uh, mandrel bend, basically. I mean, for the lack of a better term, it's a foreign piece of exhaust tube. It has a really tight inside diameter or, or, or radius rather. So it's considered a 1D exhaust bend, which is kind of hard to, to do in traditional mandrel bending. Uh, so that means it's a three inch tube, it's a three inch inside diameter. And while we went ahead and mocked up another piece of exhaust that we had here and it worked, it's gonna be a little bit of a tighter fit uh, than we'd like, a little bit extra work than, than I think is necessary. So in that case, we jumped back online and found a stainless cast iron three inch tube. It's a two inch inside radius on this, which I think is gonna be great because it will more reflect what our tech would be doing uh, if and when they go ahead and offer a an O2 housing or that short downpipe section, which I think is on the agenda. So this will more reflect what you would get as a kit option if you were to buy this manifold turbo and uh, that short exhaust section leaving the turbo. So I think it's gonna be the best option. I'm gonna go ahead and mock this up, kind of get an angle decided where it's gonna sit and go ahead and cut it. We got a big 180 and I don't think that's gonna be necessary, obviously. So we're gonna do like maybe, what would that be, a 120 degree bend, give or take. So it kind of swoops back under and kind of lines back up where the exhaust normally would have exited. Even though the wall thickness is a little bit larger than normal tubing, the outside diameter is pretty well consistent at three inches. I think the biggest issue I'm having is just that it's such a tight radius that even though it does fit inside there somewhat, it, the casting is a little bit inconsistent. So it's got, you know, it's a little fat in some areas. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing in this case is just basically coping the underside here so that the flange fits tighter inside that radius. So we'll just do a, a cope in here and kind of try to blend that into where the tube fits all the way tight into the inside of the flange here. The other thing I might have to grind out a couple sections here just where the, the casting is a little bit less consistent on that diameter. But I think I can get the two together without spending a bunch of time just grinding off that extra lip entirely. Garrett, that is a beautiful downpipe. Hey, it's coming together. Yeah, so basically what he did was that uh, cast 180 from CX Racing, and that seems like that was like perfect. Oh yeah. It gave us a little bit more than uh, a 90. So what is that, probably like a one? About 120, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Looks good, and then you can see it literally just goes down around the pan, straight back. That's freaking beautiful. Very curvy, very beautiful. And then, also that air intake that you kind of fabbed up, I really, really like that. So oh, yeah. uh, the aluminum shroud, this thing, we have the filter, we have the block. I mean, it just looks good. This is just a super legit setup. And uh, it's just crazy that, you know, I started with a Turbo Civic and it was 100% eBay. <laughs> and that's like where most people start. And I'm like, you know, I'm at that point where I'm like, obviously I, I don't really like the eBay stuff, but it is 
it's oh, a get you off the ground. It's a low barrier of entry, and it it makes you want this. You know, because like when I first had my eBay turbo manifold on a D series, literally the wastegate fell off. Like the manifold, <laughs> like it, it was like one of those eBay ram horns, and like the wastegate just fell off of it. And I was I like had to mig weld it back together, and it was just stupid, you know. But now it's like literally, it's it's just like the years, you know, of you pro oh, you yeah. progress, you get older, you start making some money, or you start spending all of your money, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, this is just crazy. So we added up pretty much the retail on this whole package, It'd be over six thousand dollars, just on the parts. Just that's on the not parts. Even on custom downpipe exhaust stuff to that's tie not, into what's existing in the that's car. That's not even your fee. Sure. That's not even including Garrett's yeah, feet. Labor, yeah. you know. And I think these bellows kind of look cool. Yeah, of course. Like it, it just right. looks like you just went a little extra and just added a little mm -hmm. spice to it. You know, it's kind of like adding like a lobster tail or like some pie cuts to a downpipe. You know, it just looks a little bit spicier than just a normal bend where that kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, technically you're flexing. Te <laughs> technically, that is a flex. It's a little flex, but that is a flex right there. Everywhere. All right. So we got some parts this morning and uh, this one day, Turbo kit turned into a couple more. <laughs> Actually, we, we weren't really planning on doing it in one day. The last uh, Civic that we did, we did it in one day. But this one, obviously, it's it's getting a little bit more care. Exactly. You know, a one day build, you kind of have to make rash decisions on a spur of a moment. This one. Well, and it, it's also really easy on a car with no AC. So oh, yeah. that is one of the pieces that showed up. So this is that AC relocation kit. Yep. So you can see the lines, instead of it doing that loop swoop and all over here and the condenser being right there, the big old thick fan. It came with this new condenser, these lines that come over here, and these lines will essentially go up under the fender well and then pop out underneath this relay box and go straight to that. You had a chance to throw in, uh, obviously we had the Treadstone intercooler, but we have this same side intercooler now, which I think is gonna be more of the, more of the move now, just based upon how much stuff is in that other side yeah. of the engine bay. And you can see he's already has the intercooler pipes kind of mocked up right here. So we're gonna have to go up into the bumper brace maybe to where that hardware comes down through the top and we can just basically drill holes, bolt down in the top there. I've got it marked out roughly where the intercooler is gonna go. I gotta make sure it's like centered before we do anything. But yeah, we're gonna be pretty much up in the bumper, whatever that is, about three inches. So height or depth wise, it's not too bad, but to keep the integrity of the bumper <clears throat> brace in place, we wanna leave as much of that there. So. That means intercooler needs to go as far back as possible. Um, just little extra things that, you know, we want the car to be safe for whoever ends up driving it. Yeah. Take yeah, no, I, I wasn't planning on mocking up the AC, but it arrived and, you know, it's time to play with new well, parts. Well, I mean, it, it, uh, it all makes sense. So we're gonna recirculate right about, you know, into that tube. Kind of already got it marked a little bit to kind of get us started on our cut, but yeah, we're gonna recirculate right there. Should be pretty clean and easy. Yeah, I like that. So the intercooler is pretty much mounted up in place um, or going to be mounted up, I guess. Uh, before I put the bumper back on and hang the intercooler, I wanted to go over just a little bit closer detail of what I was getting to with those spacers uh, if it wasn't entirely clear. So as you can see from the outside here, spacers stick up just a little bit past the bumper and at a pretty good angle at that. That's about the height difference that the posts, the studs, whatever you want to call it, on the intercooler kind of make up. So 
in order to get this to the intercooler mount straight to the flat surface here, it would have taken, you know, cutting a lot more of this bumper out, again, making it a little bit weaker, and then manipulating the surface here to kind of account for this angle, which those things are all easy enough to do, but this is a much cleaner installation. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hang it on the car and we'll kind of see how the intercooler hangs from there. A little bit more of an update. Garrett, what is this? Uh, what is that? Fancy stuff, kind of fancy stuff. Um, radiator hose. So kind of before starting to use this, which is very flexible and malleable, you know, you gotta like run to the parts store and like fit up this hose and that doesn't work, but this one does. And you kind of have to mix and match stuff that really got old. So uh, there's a company we use, a local supplier that has this as some stainless, um, yeah, just radiator hose. You can kind of flex, bend however you want, use a silicone coupler on the ends and adapt it to whatever you have going on. So we went ahead and did the lower because with everything going on right here, it's nesting so tight, that factory hose just wasn't gonna cut it. So we kind of brought this in a little bit tighter to the block and really contoured it so everything fits there without like rubbing and chasing on everything. And the thing that I like about it is that obviously we're using the constant, ten constant tension clamps, how they kind of have that like ribbed look. It kind of gives it that same yeah, like- that's true. A little ribbed. bit of aesthetic we're carrying. Yeah, look at that. So you got a little ribbed, ribbed for whose pleasure do you think? <laughs> Could Whoever be winner, yeah. your pleasure if you get in or for a chance to win this thing. Um, but uh, we are getting really, really close to starting this thing. Garrett went ahead and bent that line last night, got everything all flared. Everything is pretty good to go with the turbo side of things. Uh, he also installed the sandwich plate, the oil feed line going to the turbo. He's currently working on some coolant lines going to the turbo. And right now, you just pretty much got to bend that unit, right? And this would have been fine too, but again, just to keep that aesthetic carrying through, we're gonna go ahead and just match it on the upper radiator hose as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, I just love the way everything is, uh, is doing. So he's gonna go ahead and get that on. We're gonna get the clamps on this thing. Uh, it has oil in it, it has, some other things, and basically the charge piping is pretty dang close. You you got a 30 degree uh, 45 coupler. Again, that is a local supplier, which works out really good. They actually so nice. are on the internet, but they just ship locally from here. So you can technically like order it and then go pick it up in 10 minutes, which <laughs> was exactly what we did this morning. But you can see modified that right there. Same thing over here. And overall, this whole package, it's taking a little bit longer than I initially thought like we literally turboed that last Civic in a day. Yeah, but I'd love to see him side by side and just kind of yeah. like there's time and year, you know, or two between the cars. Like it'd be nice to just see like here's a bigger budget and more time and then just the experience that has kind of changed you know, over the years. Yeah, exactly. And then so you can see he has the AC uh, evaporator convert the dryer, whatever you call that thing. It's uh, it's kind of in its place, huh? Accumulator? Accumulator? I, mean, I don't know. Something. Accumulator dryer. Dryer. Accumulator yeah, yeah, yeah. dryer, I think is what it technically might be. Also, the downpipe is getting close to being done. Basically, you just need to final weld on that. I need to plug in the Honda data and do all those things, but I think we want to just start it up real quick. Stock ECU. I mean, obviously, we're not going to freaking hit like 20 pounds of boost on this thing. We're going to start it and rev it and say, okay, cool, everything looks cool. Make some turbo noises with that Garrett. And then. Um, yeah, let's uh let's see this thing. I wanna I wanna fire it up. So let's get this thing fired up right now. That hose has been uh, has been made. Obviously, we are not gonna tighten everything with all the cooling stuff done yet. And as of right now, it has the stock injector, stock ECU, stock everything in it. We basically just want to fire it up. We also need to pull off the oil pan and reseal it. But um, I'm kind of I just want to hear this thing. I want to I want to give it a little throttle. I want to hear what the, the little turbo sounds like. And we are pretty much straight off of the exhaust housing. So. Uh, Let's fire it up, see if she, see if she rips.
like crispy turbo noises uh, and I don't want to run it too long because we don't have like coolant and all that stuff in it. Obviously, we still have a lot of work left to do. We are going to go ahead and upgrade the clutch in here. That actually just showed up today from the guys over there at motionautoperformance.com where every $5 spent gets you entered for a chance to win this car right here. Also, every dollar spent on motionautotv.com on t-shirts, hats, apparel, all of that stuff also gets you entered for a chance to win this thing. We are not doing any entry multipliers this whole entire giveaway. So right now, as good as any, is your best chance to, uh, to get entered. So we have a lot of work left to do. We have the full fuel system from Detworks that we need to install. We need to finish welding the downpipe. A couple other little things like that, uh, obviously fitting the bumper. And then we actually have a dyno appointment on Monday. So pretty stoked about how this whole thing is coming together. If you are stoked, and uh, you know, to see a non eBay turbo civic, honestly, this whole thing, like retail and all these parts, it's a little over $6,000. Isn't that wild? Oh, that's wild? You could buy a complete running and driving turbo civic with an eBay turbo on it <laughs> for less than that. So uh, it's pretty crazy. Also, if you do want to become a VIP member, we're giving away this CRF 110 pit bike, which is a 2021. It has the electronic fuel injection. It's got upgraded bars, the springs, all the stuff. It's a perfect pit bike, you know, giving away this Honda to for the regular giveaway and that Honda CRF to a lucky VIP member. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. Stay tuned for the dyno appointment.